And queen takes f3. Oh, what is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing else to say. Wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. 10 months, 10 tournaments. The world's best players online and on TV. Uh, hey there, uh, this is the new installment of Peter and Tani. Hi Tani, how are you doing? What have you been up to since we, I'm doing good. since we last spoke? Any news in your life? Uh, I don't know, I don't think so. So Not just, just the usual. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, the, yeah. uh, the topic today uh, that was sort of agreed on beforehand uh, was uh, a conversation on the topic of king safety, which is something I uh, feels like I don't have anything structured to say about it. So I started thinking uh, which one diagram would, you know, be uh, the like which which one game, which one move maybe in a game would immediately like speak to me when I think about king safety. And uh, the answer that came to me is maybe uh, slightly uh, unusual, but I'm going to stick with it because, uh, you know, it's my hour with Tiny and I can do what I want pretty much. So uh, <laughs> we're doing, uh, w if there's a lot of time left, there are also some puzzles that we can look at uh, after we're done with the main game. But for the main game, I wanted okay. to uh, basically go through a game with you, which I'm hoping you don't know by heart, because if you know what happened there, uh, it's going to be a lot less interesting. Uh, but it's a game which I think uh, uh, does have some bearing on, on the chosen topic. And it's a game uh, uh, from uh, uh, 1981 from a tournament in Tilburg. Uh, uh, Kasparov uh, playing white against uh, Tigran Petrosian. Uh, two giants of uh, uh, of, of chess meeting uh, meeting each other, but obviously uh, Petrosian was uh, uh, that was towards the end of uh, of his life. He was already uh, not in his prime, and Gary in 1981 was uh, sort of becoming the uh, the absolute powerhouse uh, that we all uh, know and love, uh, and. Uh, I think the power dynamic there was that it was the you know the the, the up and comer, 
playing against the the wise old man who still had a thing or two to show uh, about chess. But in general, I think Gary probably considered himself a favorite. I would like to to ask him how he approached that game. But for now, we will assume that he felt that he must play sharply for a win with the white pieces. So let's start looking at moves. First, Go on. Wait, but first, which one, which one is... Are you saying Tigran is one? And Kari Kasparov is upcoming? Well, in, in 1981, uh, Gary was... I mean, he already won the Soviet championship a couple of times, and he was not an, an unknown quality by any means. But he... Uh, he wasn't world champion yet. He wasn't even the challenger yet. He was just clearly an incredibly strong grandmaster who was still sort of climbing, uh, climbing the ladder. And uh, I mean, he he, he wasn't. Uh, uh, people knew he wasn't unbelievably strong. I'm sure by 1981, but uh, it wasn't the finished product yet. He was uh, in 1981. He would have been 18, right? He was born in 63. So. Uh, still a reasonably young man, um, and uh, Petrosian, Petrosian definitely uh, uh, towards the end of his career, and he, uh, uh, he his his best years were in the sixties. So uh, definitely two two careers in in very different stages. Uh, somebody who yeah. was just coming into his prime, and somebody who was still obviously a very strong player, but some way away from his best years. So let's uh, let's start talking about the the, the actual game. Uh, d4, d5, uh, c4 takes, uh, knight of three, knight of six, e3. Uh, have you ever played these types of positions with either color, honey? Doesn't seem yeah, like your your type of an opening, but maybe I'm wrong. I have played a time, yes. Yeah, uh, knight of three. Yeah, and... Uh, Obviously, there is a lot of uh, uh, choices black can make here. Uh, these days, I think uh, most people would play uh, would play six in this position, and we get the uh, the, the classical queen's gambit uh, queen's gambit accepted. But uh, Tigran played bishop g4 instead, which is a, a very old fashioned line, which is not very active, and uh, I think mainly aimed at uh, something that. Uh, I think very many people believe this is how uh, Petrosian liked to play. Uh, and maybe this is a good time to pause for a second and uh, ask you, like, if I if I ask you to tell me uh, your, like, do you have a general idea of what kind of a chess player Petrosian was? I'm pretty sure you uh, have some idea of what Kasparov as a chess player is, but uh, do you have any kind of a set idea of uh, Petrosian and what his strengths were, what his weaknesses were? I think he was more of like a positional person. Yeah, this is. I was expecting to hear something like this, and I wanted to say that uh, this game probably will not do uh, a lot to change your mind. But uh, the thing about Petrosian was that uh, I think people very early on realized he is an unbelievably strong tactician, and they stopped giving him those opportunities. And this is why. Basically, uh, this is why what we remember of him, it's not like he was a poor positional player, but I think uh, the, the the amount of uh, games he won by sacrificing half the chess set and the, the, the gift he had for, for tactics are somewhat overshadowed, uh, in particular by people who uh, haven't studied his career very closely, because... I think it often happens that uh, you know a very very good player uh, gets pigeonholed into you know one type of uh, one type of style because at some point his opponents just decide not to give him the, the opportunity to do anything else, and then he he does this for basically the rest of his career. But even in this game, you will see that uh, if you if you provoke him, he was uh, uh, very capable of uh, of calculating. Uh, but anyway, bishop g4 is why I started this conversation, is a line which I think pretty much, uh, at least the way he played it, is, is very much in the spirit of I will have a solid, somewhat passive position and I will defend it against you no matter what you try to do. Uh, so no real uh, you know, deviations from 
his legend, at least in the opening. Bishop takes c4, e6, h3, bishop h5. Question. Yeah, go on. Uh, immediately after bishop c4, uh, when he played e6, I was like, smart move because of. Yeah, you know, I mean, blundering bishop takes f7. Blundering bishop takes f7 would be, or even maybe knight e5, right? I, like, <clears throat> yeah, knight, knight, knight e5 is even cuter. But we are talking about uh, a future world champion and an ex world champion. This is unlikely to happen. <clears throat> so uh, uh, e6, h3, bishop h5, uh, knight c3. We're not really going to be discussing the opening here very much. Uh, what black is doing here is not uh, very critical. There's definitely more principled ways of playing the queen's gambit uh, uh, accepted. So a6, uh, Kasparov here doesn't need uh, an additional invitation to play g4, knight e5, uh, picking up the, pawn on, uh, the bishop on g6, knight bd7, uh, takes, takes. Uh, first question here, once again, I'm not even sure if this is strictly speaking the absolutely best move, uh, but if I wanted to ask you, <clears throat> like, what's your immediate first reaction to this position? Uh, what would you like to do here? Queen f3. Queen f3 is fine, yeah, but uh, I'm not going to criticize you for queen f3, but there is a, a maneuver in positions like this, which I think if you haven't seen before, it's important to, to realize this move actually exists. You can play bishop f1 here. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. You, you, you get to put, to put the bishop on g2, uh, and this does two things. First of all, on c4, it is sort of in the way of black's counterplay. So uh, you slightly diffuse the, the black potential counterplay in the center by uh, bringing the bishop here. And also, <clears throat> obviously, uh, by protecting the pawn on h3, you make it quite, quite safe to castle kingside. And then you can castle kingside and go from there. So uh, by doing this, you, uh, you, you both uh, fight against black counterplay in the center, and also uh, it helps you develop uh, your own game plan. Uh, I'm not sure if it's completely impossible for Black to play c5 here, for instance. But once again, I think uh, uh, Tigran was not in a, in a mood to, uh, you know, shake things up very much in the openings. He just played c6, bishop g2, queen c7, uh, white castled kingside, uh, Black played bishop e7, uh, f4. And uh, this is <clears throat> a somewhat typical position where... Uh, very much, I think, in positions like this depends on uh, whether black will be in time to play c5. And it already feels like uh, it's probably too late. Because now if you play c5, white will just play d5. And uh, this kind of an opening of the position in the center with the bishop on g2 uh, becoming more and more uh, influential, it just doesn't look right anymore. If, if black had a, had a moment to play c5, it was probably somewhere around here. Or maybe e5, uh, to just yeah. to change the structure somehow. Uh, <laughs> but now that we get to the point where white played the four, it feels like black is more or less uh, resigned to having uh, just defend to, to having to defend a very passive position. Yeah. So black played knight b6. Uh, here uh, Gary played uh, g5, which is also quite logical because uh, at some in some positions maybe g6 g5 is a is a potential pawn sacrifice black could try if they get desperate enough. So by playing g5, we uh, eliminate this possibility. And also, uh, we ask our opponent, where do you want to put this knight? Uh, mm -hmm. Logically, like knight h5 looks like it's doing something, but it's it's going to get stuck there forever. White can play ah. something like queen f3, and it's probably not coming back. So it's not a very good square. Uh, if black plays knight fd5, what's the reason not to play knight fd5 here? I think e4. Yeah, I think pretty much e4. Because once again, the black pieces are positioned in such a way that you will be forced to take on c3. Mm -hmm. And now white has this fantastic, really, really large pawn center. Uh, rook comes to b1. And the biggest question here for black, I think, and the question with no answer is, where are we going to castle? If we castle kingside, h4, h5 will happen very quickly and we probably get mated. And if we castle queenside, there's going to be it's a rook on... Happen. Yeah, there's going to be a rook on b1 in a second, you know, queen e2, bishop e3, and uh, once again, we are going to get mated eventually. So, uh, knight d5 is, I think, also pretty much unplayable. So, Tigran played knight fd7, uh, Gary played queen g4, which I think is uh, a move you, you make to make sure f6 never happens. 
I mean, the queen could go to other squares as well, but on g4, it makes uh, uh, does a very good job of controlling a potential black counterplay uh, on the king side. Not that there's going to be much counterplay. Yeah. Uh, black castled. And now we can start talking about, uh, because it's been announced as a lesson about king safety, uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, comparative king safety here. Uh, white played a four, and also their pawn is not on g2, it's on g5, right? So there's very few pawns in front of the white king. Uh, but it still feels completely safe, right? Because black cannot really open any files uh, no. in front of that uh, of that yeah, king. F6 happens, like... It's yeah, but F6, it's, it's just so difficult, I think, to, like, realistically... Black needs to make so many moves in preparation before they play f6. And even if they do play f6, it doesn't create any threats that are, you know, immediately fatal to white. Yeah. We can maybe but even ignore it for all we care. Even, let's say, if the pawn on e6 wasn't hanging, and the pawn on e6 constantly is hanging, which means that in order to play f6, maybe you have to play something like king b8, and then something really ugly like knight of 8 mm -hmm. And we, we don't want to do that. Like, that looks horrible. Yeah. Uh, but even if we do that and we get to play f6, I don't know if white is even supposed to react to it. It's just nothing. It hasn't right. really achieved anything. So let's yeah. talk about let's talk about the black king. Uh, for now, it looks okay, right? It it looks like there is not much happening uh, with the black king. But white has very clear cut ideas of uh, of getting to it, right? If we can manage to play like b4, a4, and b5. Uh, and break uh, and break open the black queen side. We probably end up just winning the game because uh, it's going to be very difficult for black to deal with any files getting opened uh, yeah, on the, it's on the queen so side. Passive. I don't even know how you're supposed to defend this as well. Yeah, this it's is going to be quite tricky, and uh, we will we'll have to c continue talking about this. There's a lot of conversation to be had here. I have and, an idea. Of black. Yeah. Maybe like if you set up f6, you can go e5 and try to break open. Yeah, you and I, I like that you think in those terms because I think uh, you you have to sort of instinctively realize that uh, passive defense probably isn't going to work very well, uh, not. and uh, you you very much would like with black here to somehow break open something in the center. To, uh, to at least, you know, force white to pay attention to anything else rather than the queen side. But uh, it's, it's just going to be so difficult because you, you just don't have a particularly uh, comfortable way of opening anything in, in the center. Uh, and, and Gary already, his next move indicates that he understands all that and, uh, that and he wants to start opening stuff up as early as possible. He goes rook b1. Uh, Tigran plays king b8, and here uh, already the game becomes uh, quite uh, quite sharp because, um, uh, one second, uh, let me just check something. Um, uh, because Gary decides that he doesn't need any more preparation, he can already play uh, b2 before here. Yeah. Um, the, so, the... like, let's let's look at this from uh, uh, from Tigran's side. Uh, what's the, the the reply you, you like the most here? If there's anything here you like, what is the the reply you like the most? Hmm. What is the reply? Maybe knight d five. Knight d five, I think, is pretty much the only move you can even make in this position. I think this is a kind of a trick question because you probably think I'm asking something else of you but really there's only one move in this position that's move knight d5 because uh this way at least you are attacking the knight on c3 you're attacking the pawn on b4 and if the knights get traded i think probably we take with the e pawn and then we try to uh, put the knight on c4 and our position will start looking uh, a lot better than it looked a moment ago yeah. i suspect white is maybe still better after a4 but it is much less clear I think this could very easily be uh, a playable position already for black after something like knight b6, b5, and maybe even we take with the a pawn and play c5. Yeah, because... and, and we start creating counterattack and some kind of a counterplay in, in, in the center. 
because the knight on b6 is just blocking. Yeah, it's actually covering covering important squares. It's it's going to be difficult for white to to get to the king on b8 here. Because uh, but like if go. like your queen gets to a7, like queen e2, queen a2, rook a1. Yeah, but it takes a long time, and even after that, it's only really one check, right? It's not going to be decisive. And plus, uh, like king c8, the king runs away even better. Yeah. So, in in view of all that, like what's What's uh, your approach if you have this position with white? With white, mm -hmm. yeah. Like if if you got here with white, what what do you do? Maybe bishop d two. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering about bishop d two because Gary did something else, and I have a feeling I know why. I think after bishop d two, he didn't like the idea of black playing knight b six. Now knight c four is a threat, uh, and. Uh, if we play queen e2, which stops knight c4, uh, maybe now black can uh, take on c3 and put the knight on d5 again, and then maybe play f6, or maybe play f6 straight away. And we haven't really made uh, as but much progress on the queen side as maybe we would have liked. And black is finally doing something. I'm not sure if it achieves anything much, but black is finally actually making some kind of active moves. Yes, because uh, after f6, the king on d1 starts to... Yeah, I, I still don't really know what's happening here, let's say, after knight e4. I'm not sure this is so horrible, but I guess we take, right? We take and we play e5, just like you said. Probably. And and we start at least asking some questions of white, because somewhere around here, it looked like it was very possible white would not have to think about any counterplay. White would only have to answer one question in this game here, how to open up the black king, and if we solve it, we just win. Uh, but if we get to some kind of a position like this, uh, this question becomes a lot more open and uh, a lot uh, a, a lot less clear. Uh, but Gary, I'm pretty sure he didn't blunder 95. It's impossible to blunder 95. It's as we discussed. It's pretty much the only move you can make in this position. Uh, and Gary had a very very interesting uh, reply to it, which I'm sure he uh, pre-planned. He played knight a4 here, uh, and I'm pretty sure this is specifically played to have the answer to knight b6. Now white will play knight c5, and with the knight on c5, you pretty much can forget about ever pushing f6, because the pawn on the 6 is never going to be uh, protected enough. We have also covered the pawn on b4, and now we we are back to the situation where, <clears throat> sorry, uh, where uh, black will just have to wait for white to uh, for white to find a way to kill them. Uh, it's it's just it's just going to be it's just going to be uh, one way traffic from here on out, just a very very ugly position to have to defend. Uh, but uh, Tigran found a way to uh, <clears throat> uh, to continue here, which is uh, quite smart. Uh, I think you, wow. I mean you can you can take on before with the knight, but it feels like after something like Bishop D two knight. Uh, knight g5 and maybe queen e2 and then rook fc1. It looks kind of ugly. Uh, so uh, Tigran uh, realized in this position that this is maybe his best opportunity to change something on the queen, on the king side. Uh, yeah. And he played a5 here. I had that idea. I, I, I was thinking if you want to like force um, like pawn takes f6, which you do, and you could play f5. If it, if f5 benefits you, then that's good because yeah. And this is I think this is maybe the only the the only real moment Black had to do this. And uh, if White takes, Black can just take with the pawn. And after Queen takes e6, Black can play uh, Rook d8 simply. And uh, now suddenly uh, the tables have turned quite a bit because. Uh, the bishop is threatening to come out, let's say, to d6, g6, g5 is an idea. White really hasn't achieved anything much. And uh, black suddenly has very, very significant counterplay. I wouldn't say this is unplayable for uh, for white, but it's definitely a huge change in the character of the game, which Gary didn't like. And I suspect if you play e4, I think I have a solution here. I, I wonder what your opinion about this is. Like, what do you what do you like here for black? There's a, a a sequence of a sequence of moves here which I, I like quite a bit. There's bishop d6. Yeah, you play bishop d6, but the bigger question is what happens here. A five. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, there is a way to, uh, by playing bishop d6, uh, we attack the pawn on f4. And for a second there, I got stuck trying to figure out why queen g4 is not a good move. But by playing f5, we eliminate the pawn on e4, which was threatening our knight on d5. And then we probably just crash through on the king side. This looks like white is just completely lost, honestly. After both the fgf and then the rook will come to g8, or something like queen g5, f takes e4, and suddenly white's position is in absolute ruins and uh, black is just winning. Uh, and another very clever uh, tactical point of the move f5 is that uh, you have to choose a, a slightly uncomfortable square for the queen. So where do you think the queen should go here? I mean, maybe g3? Yes, but why? Yeah, I mean... This is the correct answer, but do do you do do you understand why? Why let's say to g three and not f three? This is like the first level of. Uh, oh yeah, I think there's an e five idea. I think the biggest problem is if you play to if you put it on f three, you you've put the queen in front of your own bishop, so black can take with the bishop here, which is a lot better than taking with the knight. I think it's quite simple, really, because why. Normally, normally, like if if you play, let's say queen g three, black don't have this. They don't have this option at all because bishop d five wins a piece, right? Right. Uh, and if you put it on f three, uh, black can take with the bishop, and uh, that makes it much harder for white to continue chasing uh, their pieces around. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so that's one level, and the other level is why not to e two, which seems like the best square on the board. Queen two. Oh. This move is actually playable. I wonder. I mean, it's not better than Queen G three, but it's actually a lot more playable than uh, than you might suspect. But there is a specific reason why I'm, I suspect it wasn't played. H three idea, like. No, you don't. You don't really have counterplay on the king side. You, 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 Black will never have enough time to play Rook H seven, Rook uh, Rook D H eight, and even if they do. White only needs to play rook f3, and uh, all of this counterplay is gone. I mean, there's many moves. No, but there's a specific way to exploit the fact that the queen is currently on e2. So I'm, I'm kind of giving you a subtle hint here. We are actually using the fact that the queen is specifically on e2. Um, yeah, hmm. I don't see it. Right. And I, I have a feeling I know why you are not seeing it, because I think, uh, and, and this is the reason, because from a certain certain point on, these decisions become very much part of the game, and they're difficult. I have a feeling, like, your mind, and I'm not criticizing, I think my mind would also be stuck. I I checked with the computer. Uh, I, I probably would have found it, because I have more experience, but uh, I had to ask at first. The point here is black can play b5. And... Uh, you normally kind of, your mind is very trained to ignore the idea of moving pawns in front of your king when your king is about to be attacked. But right. here we are attacking the knight. Uh, if white takes on d5, I think we are very happy because uh, the, structure yeah. becomes, the structure becomes so solid that we can even maybe start walking our king by foot towards f7, right? It's just, uh, what? What? yeah, it's, it's, it's playable for white, but it's, like now it's a completely unclear position. Who knows what's going on? Uh, and also there is the move queen c8 maybe to play knight b6 and knight c4, which might be even stronger. Uh, and and if the knight goes somewhere, there is knight c3 with a fork. But the reason I mentioned the move is playable is that you can actually play knight c5 here. And after, let's say, knight takes c5, b takes, knight c3, we go, let's say, queen c2, queen takes b1. Uh, this is a very, very unhappy... Why don't you take with the bishop? Yeah, I think maybe taking with the bishop is stronger, but the knight on d7 is not going to be much happier. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably, I mean, it could help defend like king c8. Yeah, but like if if you look at this, uh, we, we know like by, by laws, this knight can go here and then here and it's stuck. It can go here and then unless you want to play a6, a5, and a6, a5 will create targets. It's also stuck on b8. 
So both in this position and also in this position, the light piece, the remaining light piece black has uh, is just completely useless. It's just standing there. It's not going to be moving anywhere at all in this game. I think white steel isn't very happy about it because once again, you can probably start running. You can yes. probably just start running towards F7 here. And if it what? gets to F7, it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to you know, open this can. Yeah, but, when it gets to F7, it's paradox. Yeah, but, but honestly, I don't think white is worse at all, despite being a full exchange down. I'm pretty sure this is fine for white, but we are probably not winning anymore. Uh, and this is why uh, queen g3 is really the only logical square after f5, uh, because it keeps the bishop uh, in uh, in touch with the knight on d5, and it also doesn't allow any forks, because both queen e2 and queen g1 would allow the same b5 idea. So queen, that's why queen, queen d3. Yeah, queen g3 is the, your, your intuition was absolutely correct. I just wanted to see if you could figure out uh, I mean, I was very happy that you immediately kind of felt that it has to go to g3, but uh, it, it, it was just curious to me how long it will take you to uh, to figure out why. Uh, because you still, in a classical game at least, in a blitz game maybe not so much, but in a classical game you still need to uh, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, rationalize your, your decisions. Yeah, uh, Tigran, like Tigran took one before here, uh, white play bishop g2, knight g5. And in this position, uh, we get to uh, uh, another interesting, uh, interesting spot where uh, I feel kind of uh, strange talking to you about this position because I've been uh, recording videos for my uh, for my course for the for the entire day, and I didn't really give myself too much time to prepare. And I'm pretty sure uh, Gary himself analyzes this game in great detail in his books. And I feel that, you know, trying to tell you anything about this game without really, uh, you know, checking what Gary thinks about it is, you know, an extreme, an extreme version of faking it. I, I feel like I'm not doing this right. But, mm -hmm. but I did check it a little bit. And uh, the, the machines actually like one specific idea here. And... Uh, uh, I'll I'll go close the window because I'm uh, freezing here, and and then we can uh, you can take this moment to think about what you would like to do here with white, and we can talk about it. Just give me ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. It came back in exactly 10 seconds. Uh, so what's, what do you think is... What, what do you think is our general plan here? Like, what would we like to achieve? Maybe trade the knight on d5, like knight d3. But do we actually want to trade it? We're, I think we are improving Black's situation if we trade it, regardless which piece we take it with. I think giving black an option to taking e takes d5, once again, it will give them uh, the access to the c4 square. It will open the e file for some counterplay. I don't know if we want to be touching uh, touching that piece at all, to be honest. Huh? Uh, I mean, on the surface level, there are two semi-open files for us, right? So our rooks probably belong either here and here, or maybe we can double on the b file, right? Both of those things uh, seem logical. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about things that uh, can uh, improve our position, like apart from rook fc1, which is a very logical move, or rook b3, which is also a pretty logical move, but you have to expect that black will play king a7 and rook b8 once again. On the subject of king safety, the king on b8 is not very safe, but there's currently a wall of things in front of it, uh, and yeah. the only real weak point right now is the pawn on b7, uh, which can be quite well protected if black gets to play king a7 rook b8 and black i think in most cases will get to play rook a7 and king uh king a7 oh, and rook b8 i think i see the idea queen e1 yeah queen e1 is definitely a very important idea here that's uh i was going to start asking you like which pieces would you would you start improving and queen e1 is a very very important idea because it also uh, generates an idea of playing uh of playing bishop a5 which might be 
uh, which might be very valuable for us. Right. Uh, so Queen E1 is a strong move here. Uh, and uh, uh, in fact, after Queen E1, King A7, Bishop A5, Black probably needs to give up an exchange here. Black probably has to play Queen D6, Bishop takes D8, Rook takes D8. Uh, but we are maybe not we're, we're maybe not as happy about it as we normally would be. Uh, because mm -hmm. now without the bishop on d2, the pawn on e3 is a little bit weak. And maybe black has some kind of counterplay here. You know, if you uh, if black is allowed to dream, maybe they can play b5 and then c5 or something. Or b5 and then knight b6, knight c4, putting more pressure on the e3 pawn. I'm not going to suggest that this position is not better for white. Of course it is. But uh, maybe we don't want to... Uh, maybe the bishop on d2, although it looks kind of uh, passive, is doing such yeah. an important job supporting our own structure that we don't even want to win a full rook for it. Uh, and another piece that maybe we want to improve here is maybe the knight on a4, right? Right. Because, I mean, it's it's near to the black king, but it doesn't feel like we will get to play knight c5 very soon. Uh, no. without some pieces getting traded off. And we don't really want pieces to be traded off here. Uh, you yeah. mentioned knight c3, but I really don't think uh, trading these knights is very advantageous to us. Uh, so what else can we do? Then queen e1? No, queen e1 is good, but uh, like I I'm not suggesting the move I'm sort of trying to you know, cheat out of you is better than Queen Ivan. Maybe it's not, uh, but at least on a certain uh, on a certain level, I didn't really let it uh, let it check for very long. But I did check this with modern engines, and at least at least for the first I don't know minute, uh, the best move the engine suggests White have here is the move Knight B two, which is a very weird case of. Actually, an aggressive attacking move, which which is a move backwards, not even sideways. It's a move backwards. Yeah, that's is, rare. Yeah, which is arguably the, the sharpest attacking move White has here. Because we, we want this knight on c4, where it once again supports the idea of bishop a5. It also, uh, if, if White gets to play the knight, like if, if Black at some point plays knight b6, and the knight via either c4 or d3 gets to the square on e5, even the king side will start collapsing. Uh, so we play like rook fc1 here, perhaps, and then these ideas also become very, very serious. And of course, I mean, currently, I think knight b6 is probably just completely unplayable because bishop a5 will win material. Uh, I, I will not argue that knight b2 is definitely stronger than, bishop, than queen e1. I suspect it's about equal. But I just wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, the fact that you, not all of your attacking moves will be moves forward. Some of it will be finding a piece that you need to improve and improving it uh, by first moving it back. And after knight b2, uh, computer suggests playing king a7, rook b8 once again. Uh, and this is and here we will finish finish talking about this. But I want to get uh, one last conversation out of this position. And here I'll give you a bit of a hint. Uh, if we play uh, rook fc1 here, which looks like the most logical move in the world, uh, black plays b5, knight a5, and c5. Yeah. And this position, I think the computer still evaluates as slightly better for white, but it becomes quite unclear. But there is a way for white uh, in this particular position uh, to uh, very efficiently uh, make this type of counterplay completely unplayable as far as i could tell i think and, I, see. and I wanted to see if we can if we can agree how to do that it should be b5 and knight b6 uh that's actually quite quite clever but uh i i really don't like trading the bishop on g2 and also in this position i would like to attract your attention to the fact that this move exists oh wait, that, and that then and then how happy are you? I, I I would be happy. I would be happy here. You think you think you're still? I'm not even sure why it is better anymore, honestly. I, the bishop sucks. 
Yeah, this bishop, like... this bishop is not very attractive. I'm probably playing knight c4 next. <clears throat> I oh. might even be playing b5 after that, or bishop d6 and rook h8 or something. And yeah, this is very, very unclear. There's also a problem of, uh, you know, the fact that knight b6, it's a clever move. It stops b5, but it doesn't really create any threat. So black could arguably just ignore it. Uh, oh, and okay. I, I wanted to show you queen takes b6 because it's funny. But also, I think we can do something like this. And once again, you stopped b5, but you stopped b5 at such a price that maybe we are not very happy anymore, because how are we going to give mate this, to this king on a8? Yeah. It's very, oh. very safe. Okay. So, uh, so I mean, it's a, very, it's a very complicated idea. I just wanted to see if we can, if we can get to it. But I think maybe in the time available to us, we probably uh, would have to talk for a bit longer than we have but the point here is that uh we come back to the move we always like here we play queen e1 and suddenly yeah. it turns out that apart from supporting all of these ideas it also has an additional plus of just supporting e3 e4 so well that if black once again goes b5 and c5 we play e4 we take with the queen and suddenly the center just collapses like everything okay. collapses and and we just win because like this is hanging this is actually quite importantly hanging as well because we will win all of the pawns there uh and uh this position the machine says is just straight up winning for white yeah because the pawns are just hanging. yeah everything everything is falling apart it's suddenly completely indefensible black has to start making some really ugly moves and if you have to start playing knight of eight you just know your position is bad right. uh so knight b2 would have been a very interesting option here for for gary but he did play rook fc1 uh, uh tigran played king a7 queen e1 bishop a3 bishop a3 is actually a very clever move i'm sort of running through the moves here a little bit because we uh this is i think a, a, a game that is interesting enough that we could very easily talk for like two hours about it but we don't really have two hours <clears throat> so bishop a3 is played i'm pretty sure it, Tigran by this point realized that knight b2, knight c4 uh, was something that he needs to work against. But also uh, he's putting the bishop on a3 as a kind of a, an annoying little piece that white needs to take care of. And then he can play queen d6. So uh, rook c2, queen d6, rook b3. Uh, and actually queen e7 uh, the machine criticizes and says uh, rook c8, uh, hoping maybe to play c5 at some point or maybe knight b6. Uh, was a stronger option. Uh, after queen e7, uh, uh, Gary played queen e2, also very difficult to criticize because he clearly did not want to trade this knight for this bishop, so he wants to play queen d3 and then knight b2. Uh, yeah, I can't draw arrows at all. Uh, but uh, after queen e7, he could have just played knight b2 straight away, uh, and if black takes, we take with this rook, and after uh, rook b8, our uh, recent friend, the movie three four comes or makes a reappearance, and uh, the engines kind of like this position. Not not a great deal, but it's a it's a playable position for sure. Uh, but the game continued. I'll just get you to a, a new uh, critical position here. Uh, after queen e two, uh, rook b eight, queen d three, uh, bishop d six, knight b two. So uh, ten moves later, then maybe well not ten, but seven moves later than maybe it was optimal uh, white is finally settling on uh on the correct plan here of getting knight to c4 rook h c8 knight c4 uh yeah. here uh maybe black were supposed to play knight b6 uh trying to uh trade some pieces at least and if the knight avoids trades i think maybe c6 c5 becomes playable on the next move uh but tigran instead played bishop c7 uh, going back sort of into his shell. And this is a mistake. And uh, now after uh, a2, a4, uh, Black's position is once again very, very critical. Uh, because it almost, if... it almost feels that at one point there can be like a switching group. Switching group. Something. Tuk yeah. But, but I, I know what you mean, yeah. The, those, those German words are... It's interesting that you you know Zwischenzug, but you like there are you know Zugzwang is actually a word that has no analog in any language, and Zwischenzug you can just say intermediate in, intermediate intermediate move, 
and that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious, your, your language skills are, they continue to amaze me, honestly. Like you, you have these well, really impressive uh, breadth of knowledge in all kinds of languages. And uh, um, uh, one day when we have time, I will ask you about where, where is it all coming from. But uh, yeah, if you allow A5, it's not really a Tsukzwang type situation, but the moves that Black will have will not be happy moves. You will probably have to play like Queen E8, Queen F8, Queen E7, Queen E8, Queen F8 forever. You're not yeah. really doing anything else. Uh, pretty much. And this is why I suspect realizing that uh, Tigran makes a decision in this position, which, like, sadly, it's not a good decision. No. But it's a very spectacular decision, which is why uh, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about this game. Because on the topic of king safety, one of perhaps the most famous defensive players in the history of chess in this position made the move b7b5. Which, wow. yeah, I mean, unfortunately for us, it's not a good move. Because if this move was not only brave, but also very good, it would really be spectacular. Unfortunately, uh, it kind of loses. Mm. <laughs> uh, which is maybe not that surprising, because uh, all of White's pieces are aimed at the Black King, and you don't really want to start opening files around your own king like this. Probably not. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure Gary, somewhere around that point, just assumed that he will win uh, because mm. of how strong his attack is. Uh, white took, uh, black took with the C pawn. Uh, okay, so which options uh, do we have here? Just briefly, like what, which moves uh, would you consider here? Uh, 95, 95. 95, but we don't really, once again, we don't really want to trade pieces. I think we would very much like to keep as many attackers on the board as possible. I think knight e5, which allows black, for instance, to take on e5 and trade not just a light piece, but also something along the c-file. I wouldn't say it's unplayable. It's probably a perfectly fine move, but we would like something uh, with more bite to it, if uh, if you know what I mean. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So what do you think our options are here? I mean, there's also like knight a3, bishop takes d5. There's many possible. Bishop takes, yeah, but once again, I really, I really dislike the idea of trading this fantastic bishop for honestly anything. It's just too good. Too good. Yeah, I think I think it's too good. I I really don't don't like uh, anything that involves us giving up on that bishop. I think it's just uh, not great, and. Uh, I wanted to, to see, like, I don't know if we've had this conversation already. I think maybe in one of the earlier, uh, in one of the earlier talks we had, I may have told you about the story of, of my first coach who, uh, when I was a kid, probably around your age, he, it was a throwaway remark. It wasn't like a, 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 a Yoda imparting some sort of incredible wisdom type, type situation. Uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't mean anything by it, but it really stuck with me. Uh, he told me, Peter, if somebody attacks your pieces, before starting to look for squares where your pieces can go, ask yourself the question, do you actually have to move that piece? Ah, uh, I get a hint. Huh. And, and in this particular position, you, you definitely do not have to move that piece. Oh, I think it's rook a2. Yeah. Yeah, you can play rook a2, and if black takes, black just gets mated immediately by rook a6, queen c4, and then uh, queen a4 next move. So the knight does not have to go anywhere. And of course, uh, placing the rook in front of the black king uh, and starting to create all those threats, like knight a3 probably is just a winning threat now, because black will not be able to defend the pawn on b5. Uh, yeah. and, and this is where like the next four moves probably are, I think, one of the most famous sequences of moves in the history of chess or at least it feels so to me like i i have a like a weird personal relationship with this game it turns out i wasn't even like i didn't even know that yesterday but today i realized i have a very like intense personal relationship with this game uh so in this position i suspect tigran was probably in quite a lot of time trouble 
considering how difficult the previous play was, I would expect both of them did not have very much time. So all of these decisions were also made uh, with with a lot of pressure from the clock. And here Tigran already made you know one of the weirdest looking moves, I guess, in in high level chess games. He played King B7. So we're going from a7, which wasn't the safe square, but it was at least a square where the king was covered by something, you know, mm -hmm. uh, into b7, where it's it's in front of everything. It's in front of absolutely everything. And once again, unfortunately, you know, in terms of narrative, in terms of the story I'm trying to tell you about this game, unfortunately, black is completely lost here. <laughs> like, it would have been so much better if any of this worked, you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't uh and uh i can ask you like to find the the best way to finish the game off here but it's a bit unfair because i think pretty much well i mean i wouldn't say any move wins here yeah, but okay. but but there is a long list here of moves which are absolutely winning for white probably the cleanest solution here is to play queen b1 i was i was going to say that as well yeah because i think rook takes b5 is actually a very very significant threat i think well, like rook b5 or rook a6 and then queen a2 check and then rook b5 uh, are all threats that cannot properly be parried by black. Uh, and, and black also finds it very, very difficult to make moves in this position because if like you would like to play bishop b6, but that allows bishop b4 and then knight yeah. 6 and then everything collapses. Because once again, like the, the pin on the g5 knight is just so, so backbreaking for black here that... Honestly, this position, like, you just can't defend it. You, you, you have to also realize that normally to get a position where all of our pieces are attacking the Black King so much, uh, you would need to sacrifice, like, a Rook or something already. And here we're down a pawn. We haven't even had to pay anything for this. Uh, so, it, I mean, it's not really surprising that this doesn't work. Uh, no. But Gary, uh, once again, I suspect there was a, a lot of time travel issues involved. Gary made the move bishop before. I have a question. Uh, yeah, go on. Oh, uh, at least uh, Tyrion, he, he defended well. Like, he defended well, even if it was tough. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, like, he, def he definitely would continue finding the best resources. It's just that the position is objectively indefensible. But yeah, I mean, he 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 wasn't going to just give up. But uh, you know, you having the spirit and you having the skills to defend in chess, you are still you know dependent on your position being defendable. You know, <laughs> you you you're not going to defend the position that is objectively lost every single time. You will defend it sometimes when your opponent starts making mistakes, but you're not going to be able to do it every time. No. Uh, and yeah, Gary played bishop before, which is not a mistake yet, but it's not the the cleanest solution. Uh, Tigran played queen e8. Uh, Gary played bishop d6. Uh, all of this seems very logical because now I think the biggest, maybe the the most obvious threat here, is just to take on c7. Uh, and uh, because of the fork on d6, everything starts falling apart. So Tigran played rook a8 here to at least protect the pawn on a6. Uh, and uh, in this position, uh, White is still very much, very much winning if they play, uh, if they play uh, properly. Uh, but it it already is a little bit trickier than it was before. Right. Uh, and like for instance, the, the the best move here, as far as I could figure out on on limited time, is to move back to c5 and allow some trades. But even if Black trades, uh, White has uh, enough attackers left. For this position to uh to be quite bad for black but already here like if you look at this position after queen c6 it's no longer immediately obvious how we win right we probably win but i guess we play knight a3 and then we play knight takes b5 i guess this will be the solution and we also have some ideas of like knight c4 and then it goes to d4 or b4 uh i suspect that's probably how we break the, this particular uh set up open but it's already re it, it requires precision it's no longer uh automatic uh you have to think uh and instead of that uh gary played queen b1 uh, a move that we liked three moves ago uh mm -hmm. and uh here uh 
we are back to threatening root takes b5 with uh, some sort of mate. Uh, and here, Black made a move which uh, really is incredibly famous. Um, king b6. Yep. I think after king, b after king b7, you are no longer shocked by this. But still, it's, it's definitely one of the most famous defensive moves in the history of chess. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm not exaggerating here. Because in a position where only one light piece has been traded, Black is continuing the march with his king up the board towards the attacking pieces. And this is suddenly no longer better for white. White is not worse yet, but they are no longer better. I have uh, a... I have a um, go on. Who won this game? Ha, spoilers, eh? No, okay, fine, I don't count. Uh, I have a and, feeling for one, but yeah. Uh, and... Uh, I think probably the, the sort of the changed the change situation in the game was such a shock to Gary that uh, he made what I think sort of if, if we want to be fair to, to, to how Gary played this game, it really is the only the single inexcusable mistake he made in this game. Probably he didn't have very much time. I'm, I'm pretty sure that he was doing this on very, very little time. But that's the only move in the game which you really uh kind of uh, kind of dislike even bishop though b5. even though like not playing queen b1 is definitely a big mistake here bishop b4 is not the best move in the position and so on but everything up until that moment you could you could definitely uh feel uh why the decisions were made and uh you could definitely uh, understand that they were made by by an incredibly strong player uh uh, being in, in very good form. But here Gary played rook b a3, and after that uh, his position was uh, beyond repair. Uh, I want you to uh, calculate one line. It's, it's, it's a position, once again, there's a lot here to talk about. But I want you to, as a final kind of test of your, of your calculating uh, skills, uh, after bishop takes e7, b takes e4, I will make a brief note that black can also take on c7 here. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, once again, our fam our favorite move makes a reappearance. We go knight b two, and knight d three, and this is a very strange position, which the computer says is around equal. But yeah, I mean, the computer says everything is around equal, but <laughs> uh, it's one of those cases. But b takes c four is much more concrete, and I want you to tell me how white doesn't lose here. There's actually two uh, two potential <coughs> sorry two potential answers to this, uh, and I'll I'll take either one. Although, like, there's only one strictly speaking correct move, but there's also a second option which I I also will accept if you go for that. Hmm. Maybe bishop a5? Yeah, I will, I will take bishop a5, even though the computer says this doesn't actually give you full equality. And the line why it doesn't give you full equality is extremely beautiful. Black can actually take on b3, queen takes, and go rook a b8. And it turns out that after rook c2 check, black can play knight c5, yeah. giving themselves more squares for the king to run. Wow. And you don't have mate, you don't have a perpetual, you just don't have enough here, sadly. Because after bishop takes d5, the king can go to d7 and you don't have any checks. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful line. But I will give you I will give you points for, for imagination and for leaving the rook uh, under attack. But the line for white here to, to actually full equalize is to play rook b7, rook takes e7, and rook takes a6. Rook takes a6, queen b5 check, king d6, queen takes a6. Now you cannot play rook c6 because this actually wins. You have to play king e7, and white wins the piece back with rook takes with bishop d5 and bishop d7. And this endgame turns out to be just completely equal somehow. 
despite the seemingly somewhat dangerous uh, sea pawn, even the king can come and start protecting against the march of the sea pawn. And this is just fine for both sides. Nobody is better here anymore. Uh, yeah. But instead of that, uh, Gary played uh, rook b a3. Uh, and here, black just took the knight. Uh, rook a6, rook a6, rook a6, and bishop b6. And it turns out that the king on c6 is just uh, completely surrounded by uh, his own pieces. And white cannot get to it in any way. And Gary played bishop c5. And now the important thing is just not to blunder queen takes b6. That would, have been, that would have been painful. But as long as you don't blunder queen takes b6 in this position, you're just a full piece up. Uh, black played queen d8, queen a1, knight c5, dc, king c5. Wow, king takes Yeah, and, 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 and here Kasparov played rook a4 and, and just resigned because it was just too painful to look at this position. Wow. Black, can, black can continue, like king b5 is actually maybe the best move in this position, continuing to play with the king. And it's it's just such a such a fabulous final position for the game. The king basically won the game for himself. The king the king just did all of the defending on its own and uh, uh, and ended up in the center of the board, completely safe uh, no, and, and and dominating over the entire the entire board. So <laughs> I'm I'm very happy that I got to show you this game because it's a it's a famous game and also I think it's a brilliant game which demonstrates some interesting things. Uh, I don't know if we did, if we you know talk about talked about king safety enough, but it's still I think a very uh, a very good game to just uh, discuss for a bit, uh, and uh, it does feature some very very striking examples of both uh, you know fighting against an unsafe king and also defending with an unsafe king, uh, although. Uh, Sadly, un, you know, unfortunately for that story, this whole plan with b5 does not actually work. Uh, and uh, I have a comment. Sure. The bishop on on g2 only moved one, two, three, three times in the whole game. Yeah, it went to c4, then it returned to f1, and then it got to g2, and it was there until the end of the game. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. That's. I wonder how unusual that is. I wonder and, how, how unusual that is. I also so, wonder, let me just try something very quickly um, uh, while, we're, while we're still on air. Uh, hang on, I don't know what I did there. Let me just not do that. that uh, chess one sec. Yeah, that was, that was a chess-based window. Um, let me just... Uh, uh, no, no, I, I, no, no, it's, it's, it's all good. Don't worry. I, I, it, won't take, it, it won't take very long. Uh, so I just wanted to show you because once again this is this is not my example, but it's uh, as a kind of a final puzzle for you. It's probably not going to be very difficult, but as a kind of a final puzzle for today, I'm going to show you a position which I was doing the rounds on the uh, you know chess Facebook, I will call it, uh, because a lot of people were sharing it um, because of how striking this example is. Let me just. Uh, uh, one sec, let me just save this as a PGM, and we're all good. Um, um, one sec. Done. I'm almost, almost done. While we are doing that, um, how are all of you doing today? Hopefully, it's been a good day. For me, it's yeah. been a it's been a kind of a busy day, but what did I For do everybody. wrong? For everybody, what did I do wrong? Ah, okay, this is what I did wrong. Okay, one sec, uh, one more sec, and we will be all set. This was a very nice game. It is a, it is a very nice game, but I just wanted to show you this. Uh, specific position, and then we are all good. Then we're all good. Why can't I? What? I seem to be technically incapable of doing things today. Or oh, maybe, maybe now it will. Now it will work. Sorry, I'm kind of doing things uh, on the fly here, which is. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah. 
So this is, if you haven't seen this position, you, you're going to enjoy this. Obviously black to move because white to move, I'm not going to give you a, a mate in one problem. No. Uh, this is one of the most striking single moves you will ever see in your life. I feel slightly uh, ashamed stealing it from a lot of people because this game, as I meant, as I mentioned, it was uh, shared on Facebook by a number of people. I think last month, uh, and it was sent to me. Uh, I will give credit specifically of who sent it to me. It was sent to me by uh, Surya Ganguly, who's a good friend of mine, and he sent it to me on on Skype and asked me if I've seen it. And I hadn't actually seen it uh, until it was shared on Facebook by like five people at the same at the same time. This is black to move, right? It is black to move, yeah. And there is one strictly only move here that solves the issues that we have with the king's safety. Talking about king safety, white has a number of rather important looking threats here. Uh, maybe rook e1? Uh, yeah, but that doesn't actually solve your issues because bishop d1 mate uh, is a problem. Uh, I missed that. Okay, alternatively. So, bishop f4 doesn't work. Rook e1 bishop f4 does. does nothing, yeah. You can probably uh, get there by eliminating everything else, but I wonder, even after you eliminate everything else, I wonder how much time it will take you to realize what the solution is. Because I think queen, your brain your brain just refuses to process it. Queen g4? Yep. I mean, after I described it like this, I think you get there, but like this is so so difficult to make your brain just accept that this is a move that you can make. Wait, is black still losing? No. I'm out. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, black is probably winning actually. <laughs> and the point here, of course, is if you take if you take with the rook, you actually get mated. Oh man. That's oh, that's... that's one point. And, and and everything else flows from there. You cannot take with the rook. If you take with the pawn, your threats kind of disappear. Black can even play bishop f4 and then bishop g5. Uh, and if you take with the bishop, the king starts running. And after, let's say, bishop f5 check, we go bishop g6. And everything is suddenly covered. Insane. It is. It really. It really is one of the one of the most insane positions I've ever seen in my life. Because. There, there's no other move, literally. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you are, if you have enough time here to just think, like in a Blitz game, I think you resign. No, in a Blitz <laughs> game, I'm going to play like Queen G4 and hope they pre move. Or That's something, right. yeah. Like maybe yeah. you just stumble upon it by, by mistake. But like in a, in a very short game, you probably don't have enough time to process everything. But if this is a classical game or even a rapid, you probably arrive at the correct decision here just by excluding everything else and not wanting to resign you know like this is how you get there but still it's just such a fabulous fabulous one move uh like it's... in a blitz you're, you're gonna be bopping your head okay easy win next game yeah pretty i i think i think for white uh, unfortunately for us like this didn't this didn't happen in the game in the game uh white's uh, last move here was i think rook d1 g1 uh, and instead, white played bishop takes f7 check, king g7, and then rook g1 check. And the shocking thing is, even in that position, queen g4 is the only move. <laughs> but there, there it's a little bit easier, because there you are in check, and it's very easy to exclude everything else. I can't really get to that position right now, because I've entered this. I should have entered it one move earlier. Uh, but, but there, basically, if you can if you can imagine how it looks... King takes f7, queen takes h7 is mate, because the king will not run away. The king really needs the square on d7. This is why we play queen g4. Wow. Because the queen, the, the king really needs to be able to go to d7 in that line. <laughs> and the best part is that the knight's on b6, so it's still protecting a8 for any back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it, it feels like it's a study, but it's wow. it's not a study. It's from a practical game. I forget who played it. It's uh, You can find it in a database. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this one move because uh, I think it's a it's a good position to uh, to end today on. It's just a very very fun example of what chess can be sometimes. And if this is my position and I'm black, I would I would just play queen g4 and feel like resigning. But 
since I have a rule to like never win any game, unless like yeah. it's made in one. Yeah, I think I think you know if you if you get to play a move like this in a live setting, like over the board, you're gonna feel like the is best is just going to be is just going to be such a rush of rush of positive feel. Like I I can't imagine how good that feels to actually you're make never this move on the board. Sad. You're never gonna be sad ever again. This yeah, I th this is maybe a slight. Over you, you, you underestimate my, my like my capability of feeling sad. Like me personally, I would still be sad about two hours after the game. I think, but <laughs> somebody who is not as sad as I am generally probably is never sad for the rest of the life. Like Queen G four is. This yeah, it's a it's a very very beautiful move. Playing his wife—that's disgusting. Yeah, and on on the other hand, like if yeah, if, if this gets played against you, you uh, like the correct response, I think, is just to appreciate how beautiful it is, and to think, okay, I have been a part of something special. Unfortunately, I now lose the game I thought I was winning, but still, I was a part of something special. But I think very many people would be extremely salty. So because, many. Yeah, because like he, he, I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the, the player who was playing white in that game was certain he played a beautiful attacking game, and is now going to be rewarded with a full point, and 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 then that happened, you know. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and the such, and the and the worst part. Is is like, and the worst part is like it's the last round of the tournament. You yeah, both you, have I mean. Eight the, out of nine and like yeah, yeah. Depend, depending on the situation, it could really be extremely painful. Yeah, like you have, you both have eight out of nine, and like the last round wins. Yeah, I, I like, I like your. It's just like you are creating this kind of a storyline, and I can't relate to any of it. <laughs> like, when was the last time I had eight out of nine in anything? <laughs> I, I did actually have eight out of nine in more than one title, so it's not entirely true, but like it still feels like this is such a junior tournament feeling. Like I definitely had eight out of nine in more than one junior tournament. But my junior tournaments are some way behind me. <laughs> so so it's not it's no longer a very familiar feeling for me. Anyway, it's been as usual a great fun to talk to you. Uh, I don't know when the next one will be because April will be uh, quite a busy month for me, but we'll we'll figure something out. And uh, thanks for thanks for being here. And uh, you. Good luck. Good luck in everything you do. And also, the last part is that you both have eight out of nine, and whoever wins gets the GM title, and that's Oof. even cool. Oof. Uh, yeah, oh. This is this this is the stuff of nightmares you're describing right there. Okay. Uh, or Whoever wins gets world champion. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, stop. That's better. I, I want to sleep today. Please, please stop. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks everybody for watching. There will be there will be more of this.